at a moment when an increasing number of roadside bombs and suicidal jihadists and cars packed with explosives are killing and maiming people in Afghanistan and Iraq, among other places, it seemed to me it was a good time to take in a marvelous film that describes the lives and, and missions of those who are working for our military to counter this heinous threat. The film is called The Hurt Locker. I don't know if you've seen it yet. If you haven't, I encourage you to go take it in. It's a movie that chronicles what is arguably the most dangerous specialty in the United States Armed Forces, namely that of a bomb disposal unit. The guys who are doing these missions day in and day out, as portrayed in this film, are ordinary people doing extraordinary things day in and day out. The storyline revolves largely around the dynamics between three members of this unit, but it really is a snapshot of a grunt's eye perspective of any conflict, largely disconnected from the larger strategic purposes. Uh, senior officers are, are really not much present, no generals, a couple of colonels with walk-on roles. The locals are seen as mostly uh, basically untrustworthy uh, at best and cunningly malevolent, even murderous at worst. Also, the film gives you a sense of what is the sacrifice of those whose loved ones are doing these kinds of hazardous duties and how difficult it is for those serving in such units and for that matter in combat settings around the world to return to civilian life. But principally this is a film about very courageous people doing very heroic things on behalf of all of us. And it calls to mind a point that I think we don't reflect on nearly enough and that is the necessity to maintain a connection between such people and the rest of us for whom they are giving so much, in some cases, the ultimate sacrifice uh, in order to protect us. Specifically, as the success of the all-volunteer force has transformed our military into indisputably the world's most formidable fighting machine, but in so doing has made it less and less a part of the larger society, as opposed to the days when conscripts came from every community and, and every walk of life. We now have a population that I think simply doesn't feel the sort of bond that we have in the past and that we need to have today and certainly in the future. That's been compounded by several other factors. Uh, as the military has faced budget cuts of various kinds, they have tried to reduce their overhead. They've contracted the number of bases upon which they have been uh, housing and, and uh, operating their forces uh, over the past couple of decades. That means there are fewer and fewer base communities of which the military is an important part. Similarly, we've seen industrial facilities that formerly were producing planes or tanks or missiles or other ordnance for the mil military going out of business or co being consolidated and otherwise shrunk. There too, you have fewer people, notably their employees, but also their dependents and their subcontractors and the like, who are no longer connected to our military. Perhaps the most worrying of all is the prospect that some in the military don't feel much of a connection to the rest of us either, partly because of these factors, partly because many of them are being deployed thanks to the excessively small size of our military on almost continuous uh, overseas and in many cases combat deployments. Put all this together and, and it raises real concerns about the ability of this country to have the kind of military we need, to ensure that it's supported the way it should be, 
and to ensure that it feels the kind of connection to those that they're being asked to protect that we certainly want our men and women in armed, the armed forces to have. I'm happy to say that I think the GI Bill that has gone into effect this week that will provide tuition benefits for those who served in Iraq and Afghanistan and, and for some of their dependents as well is a good step in the right direction. It will certainly acknowledge that service and by the way I think it will help improve what goes on in America's academic institutions to have veterans who have seen the world and have confronted firsthand the kinds of enemies we face become part of uh, the higher education community. But it's also important, and I think Catherine Bigelow, the, the uh, producer of this film, the director of this film, uh, The Hurt Locker, deserves great credit for the contribution she's made. It is incumbent on others in Hollywood to help tell this kind of story as well, to help those of us in civilian life connect with those who are doing so much for us in the military all over the world. I hope the success of The Hurt Locker at the box office something that you can help ensure will give further encouragement to Ms. Bigelow's colleagues and counterparts to make similar sorts of films, to help tell the story of those who serve on behalf of all of us, and help us in turn support them as we should, as we must, in time of war most especially.